Hey, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good. I make videos all about adventure motorcycling, from the bikes and the gear that I've used to tips, tricks, and tutorials that I've learned over my many trips that I've taken. If this sounds like something that'd be interesting to you, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you can get notifications about any future videos that we drop. If you are already a subscriber, thank you very much for your continued support. Today, we are gonna be talking all about the Scorpion EXO AT950. I am a huge fan of this helmet. I've ridden in temperatures above 100, below 40, and this helmet has performed perfectly in everything, including rain and snow and dust and mud. It's been fantastic, and you will not find a better helmet for this price point. The Scorpion EXO AT950 is a modular helmet built for both off-road and street riders alike. The shell is polycarbonate, which is basically just plastic, with EPS dual density foam on the inside. The polycarbonate shell is strong, flexible, and pretty standard for helmets of this size. Now the EPS interior foam is built so that you've got that dual density, so it protects against all sorts of different kinds of trauma that you could have in crashes, with harder foam to protect against those harder impacts and softer foam to kind of keep your head loose inside that helmet. The Scorpion EXO AT950 is a DOT rated helmet, ECE if you get the European version. Now I know there's gonna be some pushback against this helmet because it's only DOT rated and hasn't hit that Snell certification. Snell has only certified one modular helmet in its history so far, and that helmet's not even in production anymore. The reason for this is because Part of the qualification process for modular helmets is the exact same as full face helmets. So they cannot vary in that at all. So the full face helmet and the modular helmet have to perform to the same standards in order to get that Snell certification. One of the things that fails most often on the modulars is this front chin bar has to stay secure for the first three impacts that they're doing with their impact certification. Now, those of you that know Snell really well will ask, don't they certify open face helmets, just purely brain buckets? And they do, that's true. You can get a Snell certified open face helmet out there, which couldn't possibly be as safe as a full face modular. But because they don't make any adjustment to the certification process between a full face and a modular helmet, the modulars always suffer. Far be it for me to tell you what you should do when it comes to your own safety. But if you're relying solely on the Snell certification without thinking about the qualifications that go into a helmet like this, maybe you're not looking at the full picture. Now, when it comes to that chin guard, one of the things I would like to talk about first is the closure system. As you can see, there's a metal stud right here that aligns to a metal closure on the inside. So it is a very secure closure once you get that, that snap down. You'll also see that it has a pull to release as opposed to a button. Many modulars have a button under here, and sometimes you can hit that button inadvertently when you're reaching up, maybe you need to change your microphone, touch your face somehow, or even when you set the helmet down, you'll see that that lid might pop up. With this pull closure, it's a little bit harder to do, and you really have to mean to open it in order to get that thing open. Now this helmet obviously comes with a few features that really make this a full dual sport off-roading type helmet. One of them is the peak right here, which is pretty spectacular. Sometimes with peaks, when you're riding at highway speeds, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, you'll find this pulling up a lot on your head. It'll really lift you up quite a bit. This peak, for whatever reason, doesn't do that. It's got a lot of really big vents in here, a lot of really big holes, lots of air flow going through here. So this doesn't do that, while it still serves its purpose as blocking the sun from your eyes. One of the biggest downsides of this helmet that you'll find online as soon as you look up the uh, Scorpion AT950 is its ventilation. Now, as far as an off-road, completely dirt bike helmet, absolutely, you're not gonna be able to compete with that. The ones that have 15, 20 vents in them, this is not gonna come anywhere near that. But when it comes to an on-road helmet and something that's similar to the street helmets you'll find out here, you have a really big opening up under here with this simple open enclosure here that vents out the rear um, through some simple ones. Now, the channels on the inside and the foam are really big as well, so you will get a lot of air movement through these small vents, uh, but it's just not obviously the same as having a dirt bike only helmet on. One of the other features of this helmet that's really spectacular is the closure system. So you've got the detents in here, which are really pretty secure. This, this mask is not coming down unless you want it to come down. This visor is not gonna come down unless you want it to come down. Also, once it gets to that final detent, you'll feel the whole thing close and pull back against that secure system. That way, you can make sure that you're, you're completely sealed up here. There's no water that's getting through there. You're not gonna get errant airflow coming through there other than through the vents that are on the front and the top. 
One of the other features of this helmet that really throws it into a whole different category, especially for this price range, is the drop-down visor. Uh, this is something, it's a nice polycarbonate lens again, so that even if you're not using it specifically to shade your eyes, it works really nice to keep debris off of your face if you are opening, if you are riding with an open visor. One of the reasons why a modular was so important to me is because I ride with glasses, whether that's sunglasses or my actual prescription glasses, and having a modular makes it a lot easier to get my helmet on and off while still wearing my glasses. One of the other things I was most concerned about when I was getting this helmet was to make sure that the internal sunshade comes down over top of my glasses and doesn't hit them. I'll tell you that unless you've got some really big horn rim glasses or some thick ones out there, this sunshade is far enough away from your face that any glasses will fit behind it pretty easily. One of the other features of this helmet that make it a great choice for a variety of different riding is the ability to remove the peak or the face shield with just a twist of these thumb screws. This helmet can be built out into a bunch of different configurations for a variety of different riding purposes. You can remove the peak and go with just a street style helmet. You can remove the face shield so that you have the opportunity to wear goggles with what would be essentially a dirt bike helmet. Included with the helmet are little additions to go on the side here when you remove the peak to keep the face shield nice and secure. As you can see here, I've attached my comm unit to the outside. You can clamp or stick this to the helmet without any difficulty at all. And there are speaker pockets on the inside, pretty deep ones, to attach any speakers that you're gonna have inside that helmet. All right, finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about the price and color on this helmet. For colors, you've got options all over from solid whites, blacks, anthracites, oranges, and reds, to some of the more uh, exotic colors like the camouflage you see here and some of the high vis options. When it comes to price, this is a sub $300 helmet running probably right around $269 right now. You can find a discount link in the description below if you're interested in taking a further look at purchasing this product. If I could make one suggestion about the Scorpion EXO AT950, it would be to remove the stock face shield when you first get it and replace it with a pin lock system. I used the stock system when I was doing a really humid ride down in Central America and had huge problems with fogging all the time. As soon as I replaced it with the pin lock, problems went away and this is now the perfect helmet. That's my review of the Scorpion EXO AT950 modular helmet. If you have any questions or there anything that I didn't cover, please leave a comment below. This is my go-to brain bucket, my crash cap, my high side hat, my brain damage boondoggler, my boom bulwark, my grill guard, my skull screen, my get off guardian, my dome deliverer, my nervous system muscle my smash shield, my oh shit insurance policy, my death denier. What?